It's time to take you behind the scenes of the making of the Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup video game. So, where do we start? We track down some of the high-flying team to discover some of their secrets. I think the most challenging thing for us when we were making the game was um, taking a, a game which only exists in, in books in the Harry Potter world and translating that into a video game. Quidditch is like three sports. It's ice hockey, basketball and football. It's the speed and the physical nature of ice hockey. Basketball where it's fast end-to-end -end action. Soccer because of the complexities of the game. It's got that kind of dynamic speed, so I'd compare it to maybe one of the extreme sports, maybe like snowboarding. It differs from uh, normal sports games in that it's actually a magical sports game. It plays on broomsticks and it's played in three dimensions. Surely we've seen Quidditch played before. In previous games, you've played one small element. You've played Harry Potter catching the snitch. In Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup, it's a complete Quidditch experience. You're getting to experience chasers, beaters, seekers, and also the keepers, you get the whole thing. This is a completely different challenge for us, making the game. The making of the game became more complex when the designers took the game to the next level, the international arena. Once, once you've won the tickets to the World Cup, you start to play at an international level. This is where the pros come out to play. Now we know how to play, we can explore just how difficult it was to bring the game to life. Each object in the game was first constructed out of a kind of 3D wire mesh. All of these things are basically created with triangles or polygons. Just kind of think of it like papier-mâché. You've got the chicken wire, it's the framework that creates the, the body of the player or, or the sides of the building. Let's take a closer look at the players and where they play. There are nine different international stadiums. The way we kind of went about creating all the different styles for the stadium was just going backwards and forwards, lots of concept works, lots of drawings that we threw away. And what about the players? Obviously Quidditch isn't a real game, but if it was, it's supposed to be set now. The teams are current, so although the uniforms are traditional, they have lots of modern elements to them. Yeah! Within the game, all the teams do play really, really differently. You've got the Japanese team, they're all flair teams, they use a lot of combination moves. The French, uh, their special moves were very kind of flamboyant and elegant, whereas the Nordic ones were much more kind of brutal. Once the animators have got the game looking right, the audio designers get together to make the sound work alongside the visuals. The broom sounds we use are somewhere between a, a, a howling wind and a jet engine. They're quite a natural sort of sound, but very, very energetic. So to sum it up, only one question remains. So what's it like to ride a broom? Sitting on top of a jet aircraft, traveling at 500 miles an hour. I'd love to ride a broom, I think it'd be great. 